everyone it's jessica from fairy dust and dishes and welcome to part two of my disney cruise planning videos um today i'm going to talk about past and current disney cruises that i've gone on and that i am going to go on currently so the first thing i want to talk about is when you book a disney cruise um they will send you some of these little books and we are on our third Disney cruise after your first Disney cruise you are part of the castaway club and you are silver if you've gone on five or more cruises you move up to gold I believe and then ten or more cruises is platinum so we're still on the silver level and it'll just say that on your book so we have got two books because we've I have two staterooms, one for us and one for my in-laws, but we are the main name on the account. So we are on both of them. So the first thing I want to talk about is these little books. Um, in here are, or is information on your cruise. If you book uh, the Disney transportation from the airport to the port you will they have a disney cruise transportation that will there will be info in here for that as well as like a barcode for them to scan as well as some of the luggage tags now there's a couple different ways that this has worked for us in the past our very first cruise we flew in on the day of the cruise so we put these luggage tags on here in milwaukee and we didn't see our bags until they were delivered to our stateroom on the cruise ship. So it was really nice when we were traveling with, she was uh, Grace when she was nine months old at the time, we didn't have to see our bags. The downfall to that is we had to get up at two or three in the morning and you are going, going all day. Last time and this time we are flying in the day before and we're actually staying at the Orlando Airport Hotel, the Hyatt. So that's also actually very nice because you can get in whenever you want. I think we get in around seven o'clock on Wednesday night and our cruise leaves Thursday morning. So we don't have to get up quite as early on Thursday. Our port arrival time, which you choose at your online check-in, our port arrival time I believe is the first one that day and it's at 11 o'clock. So we don't really have to get on the Disney transportation much earlier than say, 9 9 30 depending on when the first bus leaves but one of the nice things about staying at the Hyatt is they have a service you put these luggage tags on and you sign up at the front desk someone will come and get your luggage for you deliver it to Disney and then Disney will give it to you at your stateroom so you just have to pack like a day bag and stuff like that it's amazing. Disney has thought of everything. If you've been to Disney World, I know they do these for the different hotels that you stay. So very similar to that. It's a very nice feature and I, I'm actually very glad that the Hyatt does that so you don't have to wheel around your luggage everywhere. You just have to pick it up when you get there and get it to your hotel room. Very nice. If you have booked any port excursions or you signed your child up for the kids clubs because they do have kids clubs on the ship. They have to be potty trained and they're for kids ages three and up, which are included in the price. Now for Grace, she is not potty trained, nor is she older than three. So she's actually gone into the nursery. She only did that a couple of times on our very first cruise. We were lucky enough to have family with us last time and we're lucky enough to have family with us this time. So we won't be utilizing their services on that, which were wonderful, I will say, for some for it for a child that has never been in a daycare setting they were really really um wonderful and considerate and understanding of that so i do appreciate that but the kids clubs are included if you want more information on that i will leave a couple of links below where you can go and find information but there are three main kids clubs i'll just quickly go over it. there's the oceaneers club which are for kids ages 3 to 12 there is the edge club i believe which is for the preteens, and then there's a vibe club which i believe is like 17 to 18 years old amazing 
I will show some videos when we get on the ship you can go walk through all of the kids clubs so I will definitely do that and have some videos if you are interested you can watch those later on after our cruise and after I get some videos of those I will say my goddaughter was almost 13 at the time and she did go to one of the kids clubs and as an only child I think she was kind of nervous about meeting people but she did meet a friend on the cruise and I think they've spoken since but she also actually enjoyed going to hang out with kids her own age so they are a wonderful experience. Grace can play at the kids clubs when they have open house and she loves those. We have not been on the wonder yet so I don't know how those kids clubs are going to work but we will see. The next thing is that is in here so if you uh, booked any port excursions they will be listed in here. We were very lucky that we were able to snag a cabana on Castaway Key. Castaway Key is Disney's private island that if you're cruising in the Caribbean or the Bahamas, they usually stop there. If you're like in Alaska or I think one of their Panama Canal ones or any other area, I don't think that they stop at Castaway Key. But one of the nice things about Castaway Key is it's Disney's private island, but there's so many things to do on it. We're in the we're doing a Bahamas cruise but we only have one stop, which is at Disney's Castaway Key. But anyway, so we were able to snag a cabana. So there's information on that in here, which is really nice. And if you, if last time I did the Stingray Adventure, so there was information on that in here. All the information that you need to know is in this book. So it's very helpful. Your itinerary is also in here. So since we've been on three cruises, I'll go over the itineraries. Our first cruise was a Bahamanian cruise like the one we're going on we actually stopped at Nassau Bahamas we did not get off because I am terrified of the Zika virus and we didn't want to deal with that so we didn't get off but we went to Castaway Key then on our last cruise it was a four night one so we stopped at Nassau Disney's Castaway Key and then we had a day at sea this time it's a three night Bahamas cruise and we have a day at sea and then we're stopping at Castaway Key we would love to do a different type of cruise at some point. Right now we're just on the shorter cruises. Then as far as food I want to talk about with you, they have something called rotational dining. And before I go into that, I just want to mention included in your ticket for your cruise is all sodas, waters, milk, and coffee, and all your food is included on the ship. Extras would be alcoholic beverages, fancy type coffees from their coffee shop or their movie theater stuff that if you want to buy popcorn or sodas in the movie theater. Canned sodas are extra. They have a fountain soda station near the pool area and you can go grab cups. We actually bring big water bottles and you can take one of their cups, fill it up and dump it in there. And we have you can bring sodas or water with you wherever you go then. So that's one thing we do. But Disney has something called rotational dining. They have three restaurants on each ship and they have a buffet restaurant. The buffet restaurants are open at certain times throughout the day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can choose to go there for dinner if you want, but you are always scheduled at one of the rotational dining restaurants. And so they rotate you. So there's the ones on the dream that we've been to were Animator's Palette. Um, I'm blanking out. Animator's palette was one of them royal palace and enchanted gardens so let's so the first night usually we were at enchanted gardens then we were at royal palace and then we went to animators palette that has actually been our rotational dining for all of them and it's really nice they have wonderful wonderful food i would recommend that now some people don't like to have to go at certain times because they have two seating times. Their main seating, which I believe is at 545, and then there's a later one at 830, I wanna say. We've done both. I prefer the later one, but with having a child, we have to go to the earlier one. The later one was way more laid back and relaxed. I feel like we got served our food a little bit quicker and it was not as crowded. So I would prefer that, but with having a little child, we have to go to the earlier one. 
Now some people don't like having to go at certain times so they can go to the buffet area and that is open I believe for dinner as well. We have not gone. Now on some of the ships there are some extra special restaurants, fancier restaurants. On the Disney Dream we were on they had one called Palo which I believe is an extra $35 per person. That does not include alcohol either. Then there's one called Remy that is based off of the movie Ratatouille which my husband and I were able to very fortunate to go to on our very first cruise. That is a little bit more expensive. It's around $100 per person, but I will tell you it is by far the best meal I've ever had. Hands down steakhouse, and I've been to some really fancy ones like Morton Steakhouse. That is by far one of the best restaurants I've ever been to. And I will explain more on that in later videos if you want. This is just kind of, I'm trying to do a brief overview on what our Disney cruise could look like, has looked like, and things like that. But on a Disney cruise, you should never go hungry because there is also other little restaurant type places that are open quick service, like pizza, chicken fingers, french fries. Those are always open. But wait, you're saying, Jessica, two in the morning, I'm hungry. That's okay, room service is included. It is 24 hours a day and it is included. You may have to tip, which they recommend tipping like one or two dollars per item or per person, but you can get room service and it's included. I think there's a few things that are not included like canned sodas and alcohol, obviously, but you can get food any time of the day or night. And here's a little insider tip. Mickey bars are not on the menu and they're not on the room service menu, but you can order Mickey bars. And here's another tip. When it is, when Grace has, after she's gotten her bath, we have ordered some milk and cookies, but ask for the cookies warmed up. So you have warm cookies and a glass of milk, and it is amazing. Room service is the best ever. Um, I wanna talk about the sleeping situation. So we have always stayed in a veranda room. So there's like a queen size bed, then there's a couch area, that fold into a bed and if there was another person, there's a bunk that fold above the couch that can fold down. So it's just like a little sitting area during the day, but then fold into beds like bunk beds at night. If you want that upper bunk up or upper bunk down for someone, you can have that. They turn it down for you. Your stateroom host will. Grace has slept in a pack and play on our first cruise and the last cruise we actually had her sleep on one of the beds and we just had a railing and some pillows around her and it was phenomenal. She was almost one and a half on that cruise and it worked great. So I would recommend that if you wanna save some space in there because they are cramped. Again, I will show all these videos and a stateroom tour of our stateroom once we get on the cruise. But this is just, again, a brief overview. The room also is nice because it has two bathrooms, one with a sink and a shower and one with a sink and a toilet. So. I shower, I need to finish getting ready and put on my makeup, or I need to wash my hands, I can go in the other bathroom. It's actually very nice for two people to get ready together. Um, just a couple of more things I wanted to touch on here. You can order gifts and amenities to be delivered to your stateroom or to someone else's stateroom who's going on a Disney cruise. Last cruise for a surprise for my goddaughter slash cousin, for her birthday, we had her room decorated with Dory, Finding Dory decorations, and with it came a pillow and a wonderful, wonderful blanket. So that's something you can purchase ahead of time. We also did that for ourselves because we love our blanket. The last cruise, or the first cruise we were on, I surprised my husband with getting a beer mug, and you can carry that around with you and get discounts on beer around the cruise ship. And I also ordered my daughter the frozen package, which included a frozen blanket and a frozen pillow. And we still love that frozen blanket to this day. This time we're surprising my uh, in-laws with a little something on the cruise and ourselves. You'll have to tune into that video to see what we are surprising them with. But you can do that. You can surprise other people with, you can even have water bottles delivered on board and things like that. And to their stateroom, I think there's not only Finding Dory, there's like birthday ones, there's Star Wars ones. There's a lot of stuff if you look under the Disney Cruise Line website, 
there's a whole list of things that you could have delivered to your stateroom ahead of time, or if you want to gift it to somebody, that's an option as well. Um, another thing I want to talk about is gratuities. So gratuities are not included on a Disney cruise. They have recommended, they'll give you a recommendation of tipping $12 per person in your party per day. So since there's three of us on a cruise, that's $12 for Grace, $12 for my husband, and $12 for myself. So that's $36 per day that we would need to pay in gratuities. We've done that. And you can prepay them ahead of time, which is, this is the first time we're actually prepaying our gratuities, so they're already paid for. But I will say, we have always over tipped. Your stateroom host is probably the most important person on the cruise. They will get you pretty much anything you want, and they make you some really cool pillow, uh, towel animals, not pillow animals, towel animals. We always tend to over tip our stateroom host. Then you have to tip your dining room server, and they have a head server who's kind of in charge, then your actual server, and then the assistant server. And you don't have to worry about divvying this all up. Disney does it for you. If you want to tip extra, you can go ahead. They can charge it to your credit card. You just go to guest services and tell them, hey, I want to add $10 to this person's tip, or I want to add $25 to this person's tip, and then you give them a little envelope. We have usually written a note to every single person because of our phenomenal service with them. I just can't beat their service. And with the people that they have to deal with on a daily basis sometimes, it's hard to keep a smile, but they really do. They're, they, I don't know. I, I'm just blown away at some of their service sometimes. Um, there is also an app for your cell phone that you can get. You can get it ahead of time, which then gives you a, uh, a countdown to your Disney cruise. Now I'm videoing this about a week ahead of time. So I'll quick show you, this is the Disney Cruise Line app. And then there is the countdown to your cruise. So we have about nine days left. Now, once you're on ship, you put your phone into airplane mode and this activates the whole thing. So right now it's not activated because I'm not on the ship and on their Wi-Fi yet, but they will give you the all the menus for the restaurants. It'll tell you when character meet and greets are or all the activities going on that day. There's a lot to do on a Disney cruise. And this is like your little personal navigator. Now there's also, you can also text other people. So my husband has the app, I have the app, and we can text each other if we're on the ship. Hey, where are you? Let's meet up in 10 minutes. Or I ran back to the, to the stateroom to either change into my swimsuit or to change Grace's diaper or something. I'll be like, hey, honey, where are you? And you can just text them. If you don't have a smartphone, that's okay. There are Wave phones in there. They're like little cordless phones that you can use to help you. And I know this video is getting really long. So that is going to be it for this portion of the planning. And I know it's a lot of information, but this is just a brief overview. And I'm sure I will touch more on this either in future uh, cruise prep videos or on actual cruise videos. So if you have any questions, and I know I talked fast, please leave them in the description box or in the comment section below. I will try to do a Q&A after our cruise to answer all the questions that you guys have come up with on a Disney cruise. So I will see you guys next time. If you are new to my channel, please click subscribe as you will see all the latest videos regarding our Disney cruises. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. All right, everyone, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.